We're the Lackey family, and we don't really love how we can't be together today, but we would like to give you a little bit of a Sunday school lesson just so you all can take some time together as a family. Um, I'm Emily. I'm Dean Margaret. I'm Van. I'm Amy. And I'm Evans. And today we're going to talk a little bit about our feelings and emotions and what we can maybe do to help ask God to give us a little more direction and strength when we're feeling a little confused and worried. Um, and it's okay to feel worried right now because there's a lot of things going on that we don't have a lot of control over. But Jesus set an example for us. When he was feeling worried, he prayed to God. And so we're going to go over a couple different ways to pray today. And one of them is, um, you probably have heard this before, but if you just have your hands together like this, all five of your fingers kind of stand for something. And so your thumbs, when you bow your head to pray, you can just remember, I need to pray for my family and those closest to me. That's your thumb. I need to pray for my teachers because that, that's your pointer finger. I need to pray for leaders because that's your tallest finger because leaders have a lot of big choices to make right now. Your ring fingers, and you know how your ring finger is kind of like the weak finger? It's hard to bend it. Those are for the weak people. Remember to pray for the people who are sick or who um, might need some extra strength. And then your pinky is the smallest one. So that's the, the finger to remember to pray for yourself and whatever you might be feeling or needing. And so if you just put your hands together to pray and you don't know how to pray, that's a quick way to remember who to pray for. And Miss Christina is sending your mommies and daddies home with this little sheet to remind you about how to pray with the five fingers. Um, and then Abe has another prayer he likes to do uh, before he eats. Can you show us that prayer? Blessed is the Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So some people like to pray just to express gratitude before they eat a meal. Um, let's see. So Van also has a little craft to talk about um, different emotions. Miss Christina will be sending this home to do with your families too. And it talks about all the different things you might be feeling right now. Um, one of the emotions on there is worry. Van, can you tell us about a time you were worried? When I was worried is when I many times changed schools and at the beginning of the school year, it was, I, I was kind of worried, so. And what did you do, um, or what do you think, looking back on that, you could have done to help with some of those worries? To help with some of those worries, I could pray to God and say, please help me make friends or something like that. Jeannie, how about you? Is there a time where you felt worried or sad or anxious? Um, when, uh, when I'm on my own and um, I need help on something and I'm struggling really hard. And what do you think you could do um, if that happens again? I pray to God and, and say I need help to stop struggling and like know what to do. That's right. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about what Jesus did when he was feeling worried and anxious. Yeah, so... Jesus has a lot of great stuff to teach us, and we're lucky that um, when we think about prayer, we wonder, you know, what kind of example Jesus could, you know, made for us. And when I think about it, I think about, okay, well, was Jesus ever worried? And the answer was yes. He really was worried, like like we are today, about the coronavirus, for example. Um, what did Jesus pray about when he was worried? Well, in in Luke twenty two. We get to, to read about that when he prayed on the Mount of Olives. And I'm going to read from, from Luke 22, uh, 40 right now. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed. And this is where Jesus was praying when he was really worried, just like us. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. I'm going to repeat that. Yet not my will, but yours be done. So the first part of that prayer when, when Jesus was worried, and he was, again, really, really worried, just like us, he asked for something like, like we might ask for, like, um, 
help me meet some new friends at my new school. Um, the second part of the prayer I think is the most important. Not my will, but your will be done. So I think that's important as we're, um, in times like these, we're, we're praying for our friends, our family, our church. Maybe, maybe this week we could pray that God's will be done in our families, in our community, in our church, in our schools. And, and to remember that, that's what Jesus prayed for. And um, there's also a little link to a video that Ms. Christine is going to send out to your parents um, about how to maybe um, think about worries differently and how it's okay to feel those things, but how we can express those things to our parents and people who are close to us. Because it's important to talk about how you're feeling um, to those who love you, and they will listen. And um, I also have another little craft. If your mommies and daddies have some string or ribbon or anything around that you could make tie into like a little <coughs> necklace or a bracelet and some beads, Jean Margaret has um, this little jewelry making kit where we got this from, but she's already wearing a little prayer bracelet. We made an example and we have some more beads to make another one. And if you don't mind, Jeannie, just putting the um, beads on as I talk about the first bead. Sure. Yeah. So the first bead can go on the bracelet. That is to remember Jesus. So kind of just like the five finger prayer, when you're doing your bracelet, you can remember, okay, if I look at the first bead, I need to remember Jesus. Oh, is that going to fit in my hand? So that one's for Jesus. And then the second bead is for Jesus' teachings. There you go. And the third bead is for Jesus' words. And then I think, Van, do you have another bead? I do not. Let's not do any. <laughs> bead is for, or no, the fifth bead, can you put that one on, yes. is for Jesus' death, which is important to think about around, especially as we um, get through Lent and um, think about Palm Sunday and Easter that are on the horizon. And then Abe, do you have the last bead? Um, I think I dropped it. Let's see if we can find it. I gave it to you. Well, we have the last bead, but the last bead is for his new life. And that's probably what we most need to think about right now, is that even when times are hard, we are saved. And we have um, a great example of someone who trusted God and God's will, and he led by um, prayer and faithfulness and hope and love. And that should all bring us some sense of strength today. So to close our little Sunday school lesson, um, oh, and then you can tie up your bracelet. Tie it up. Of course, or the beads are going to fall out. Yeah, this is true. an example. So. And then just wear it, especially right now. Um, it'll be a good thing to have on through this <clears throat> time. And Van is going to end us in a little prayer that he wrote. So can everybody bow your heads? That being pretty. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for the brave, bravery of Jesus, our Savior. And help us to remember to pray when we are in hard times. Help us to do everything you ask and remember our Lent goals. When we are in the desert for 40 days, you choose light instead of dark. In this hard time, help us to remember our doctors who are risking their lives to keep us safe. Help us to remember our faith and your strength. Thank you for saving us. Amen. 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 Hope you all have a great day. Enjoy doing these activities with your families.